Ever since Henry Ford fired up his first two-cylinder quadricycle in 1896, engineers have experimented with a myriad of ideas to give power to a car's wheels. There were gasoline engines, of course, but also steam engines and battery-powered cars. As the auto industry grew, car makers looked for ways to improve engine performance and beat their competition. The Henry Ford's curator of transportation, Matt Anderson, showed me some of the alternative engine ideas that have kept us moving down the road. I recognize this, it's a Volkswagen. That's right, this is the best known car with an air-cooled motor. Uh, and the engine is in the back. Engine is in the back. Most car engines at the time were in the front of the car and were kept cool by a radiator circulating water around the engine. This is an air-cooled motor? Air-cooled motor, so there's no radiator, there's no water. How did the air actually get in to cool the engine? The bug is designed in a very specific way. It's a very streamlined look to the car. And as the air passes over the roof here and comes over the rear windshield, it develops an area of low pressure which helps to draw or suck air into these vents back here. And then they're directed onto the engine. So Herbie the love bug was air-cooled. Herbie was air-cooled, absolutely. And, and he just was plain cool, Herbie. <laughs> The development of jet and rocket technology in the 1950s and 60s influenced another engine innovation. Welcome to the jet age, Mo. Blast off. This is a 1963 Chrysler turbine. They experimented with using turbine engines in these cars, and they're similar to a jet engine, though instead of the jet exhaust pushing the car forward, it drives a drive shaft just like in a conventional vehicle. So it's much, much smoother than a conventional piston-driven car. Is it silent? It's not quite silent, but it makes kind of a whirring, whooshing noise, almost like a vacuum cleaner. So what was the downside? The downside was the fuel economy on this car. You got maybe 10, 11 miles per gallon, which even in 1963 was just not all that good. Despite its futuristic promise and cool jet age design, the Chrysler turbine never took off, and only a handful still exist today. But the development of native rotary engines over ones requiring pistons and a crankshaft continued. This is one right here. We've got it cut apart so you can see what makes it different. It is a four cycle engine like a traditional piston engine, but instead of those pistons and cylinders, it has a rotor inside that powers the car. And as it spins around, it would draw in fuel, then it would be a spark that causes the ignition, which spins it around and then dries out the exhaust, which moves the car. The rotary engine had plenty of power and smoothness, but it was prone to leaks and also got lousy gas mileage. But it's still popular in high performance race cars where speed trumps fuel economy. Today's alternative engine ideas include cars powered by hydrogen. But back in the day, scientists and engineers had some far out ideas about our driving future. In 1958, Ford had a concept car they called the Nucleon, which the name suggests would have run on nuclear power. They thought that maybe with one of those cores powering your car, you could go 5,000 miles between recharges. Mm. You get into a bad traffic yeah. jam, you'll have a total meltdown. <laughs> yes, you will.